Hello, dear students. I hope all of you are safe and sound at your home. We are discussing the different methods of analysis for moisture content in the food sample. Okay. So, in last video, we have discussed the first three methods for the determination of moisture content present in the food sample. And these are <coughs> Owen drying method, then uh, fast drying method, then third one is vacuum drying. These are the three first three methods. Today, the remaining procedures, remaining methods applied for the moisture content for food analysis that we are going to see. Okay. So, the fourth method is microwave analyze, analyzer. Microwave analyzer is also called as microwave moisture analysis method microwave and moisture analysis or microwave drying simply so the title itself indicates that in this method we are using microwave radiations in this method we are using microwave radiations for the drying purpose so up to this in the advancement of the different types of procedures for moisture content analysis this was the first time this was the first time in the development in this field that in when we are using microwave analyzer for the uh, moisture analysis this is the in this method we can uh, analyze the moisture in process in process analysis can be done so this this method is useful for the manufacturers of different types of food materials or food samples okay so producers and our manufacturers have benefited by the method of microwave analysis okay so in this microwave radiations are generally used for the uh, drying purpose it is just the simple principle which is very similar to that of the we are using microwave oven for food cooking okay or microwave uh, analysis microwave synthesizers are also there in the laboratories which are having the source of microwave radiations and these radiations are generating heat and due to this heat the water content or moisture content of that food material is get uh, knockout okay so this is one of the best accurate and very fast method for the uh, moisture analysis or water content analysis or total solid analysis okay so this is the advantage of this microwave analysis that is this is very fast accurate and very uh, reliable technique for the moisture analysis of the food sample but it has one disadvantage what is our disadvantage that only one sample can be analyzed at at a time okay so this is one of the major disadvantage only a single sample can be analyzed with the uh, at at a time okay so this is the advantage disadvantage then the, this is uh, the next one that is fifth method for the moisture analysis is the infrared drying okay so what is infrared drying we know that ir radiations so ir radiations are used in which ir lamp is used as a source of ir radiations okay which contains ir ir lamp is generally red in color and uh, it is uh, producing red light that's why we call it as an infrared light okay the frequency and wavelength of these ir radiations is totally different than that of the uh, visible light that we are using in our rooms and uh, our offices okay so the ir radiations which are giving high heat up to about uh, uh, 2000 to 2000, uh, 2500 kelvin okay so this such much amount of heat is generated by using ir filament light okay and in this technique the ir radiations are uh, enters into the core of the food material okay so the water is removed or moisture is removed from the inner core of the food material 
okay so that's why these radiations are giving accurate results okay so iron radiations are entering into the core or in, they enters into the food material into the matrix of that food material and that's why they are knocking out or they are removing the water molecule or moisture content which is present in the food sample so this is the next technique that is infrared drying then the next technique is sixth one is rapid moisture analyzer rapid moisture analyzer is nothing but rapid means it is very fast technique for the moisture analysis in the food sample okay so this is the automated uh, technique we can say and uh, this uh, gives a very fast results and accurate results okay because due to the automation the, the results obtained from this type of technique is are very accurate and very fast or rapid okay so what is done here we know that a digital balance is we are uh, known about the digital balance weighing balance okay that we are uh, using in the uh, laboratory research laboratory or in the chemical laboratory or in the shop of goldsmith okay so these digital weighing balance are generally used and they have aluminium pan we are weighing that we are keeping our sample food sample for uh, food sample on the filter paper or on the aluminium pan of that digital weighing balance and this digital weighing balance it also uh, added with the high heat generating system okay so the heat generated in this system or in this type of machines is uh, very high okay so that's why uh, very small amount of moisture content if it is present in the food sample okay less than uh, microgram level they can be trapped or they can be removed or they can be analyzed with the help of rapid moisture analysis okay so the system is like this the digital weighing balance uh, is there in that machine okay and on that aluminum pan or on, on a filter paper we are keeping our sample okay and then under control conditions where there is no any contact with the atmospheric moisture with that our sample then the system is automated in such a way that as there is atom at automatic uh, weighing machine so we uh, at, at the time of keeping our sample we can uh, notice or we can uh, take out our uh, we can uh, write down our uh, weight of our sample okay and as heat is generated within that system okay so due to that heat produced the moisture present in our sample food sample is get decrease or it is get evaporated and whence the water molecules are get evaporated from our food sample automatically the way weight of that our food sample that we already weighed by keeping on that uh, aluminum pad okay it is get reduced okay and it <coughs> the difference between these two we can easily uh, get by the differentiating the two values okay then that system is allowed to cool to room temperature ambient temperature and then calculation are done by using uh, specific formulae uh, given for that rapid moisture analyzer okay so these are the one uh, fifth fourth fifth and sixth method for the moisture analysis now uh, the next procedures for the moisture analysis where will are these are dependent on distillation procedures okay so distillation procedures are what are distillation so we are boiling a we are boiling uh, our solvent okay we are boiling our solvent and at the boiling point of that solvent or that liquid we are distillating that uh, sample okay this is the with the help of heating okay so it is called as uh, distillation process there are two types of distillation process are there uh, for the analysis of moisture the first one is direct distillation and the second one is reflux distillation with immiscible solvent so what is direct distillation so in direct distillation the <coughs> food sample which contains water or which contains moisture it is get uh, distilled out with a immiscible <coughs> with a immiscible solvent okay which is uh, having high density or low density 
than that of the water okay this is the direct distillation method and the second one is called as reflux distillation with immiscible solvent reflux distillation is generally done with the uh, some of the food samples because in this condition in this case very small amount of moisture if it is present in the uh, your food sample they can be trapped or they can be analyzed with the help of reflux distillation technique okay so in this case uh, generally the solvent which are having uh, low boiling point than the water or high boiling point than the water can be used okay generally uh, there are two types of solvents depending on the density they are called as high denser solvents high dense solvents and some of them are called as low dense solvents low dense solvents okay so low dense solvents means the density of water is is one gram per ml we know that density of water is one gram per ml and low dense solvents means the solvents which are having density less than water they are called as low dense solvents okay for example ether the condition is that they must be immiscible they must be immiscible with solvent so that they, they should not be miscible <coughs> they should not form a <coughs> sorry they should not form homogeneous mixture of that water and that uh, other solvent okay so they must be immiscible so low dense solvents includes ether then uh, ethyl acetate then xylene then toluene etc so these are the examples of low dense immiscible solvents with water then high dense solvents all chlorinated solvents all chlorinated solvents are high dense solvents means that density is greater than one okay so these are including uh, dcm that is dichloromethane or uh, methylene dichloride okay then ccl4 then uh, then uh, dichloroethane dichloroethane okay all these are the examples of high dense solvents okay now <coughs> there are two techniques are given in our syllabus the first technique is known as bidwell sterling moisture trap okay bidwell sterling moisture trap so what is this bidwell sterling moisture trap so this this is, there is a trap the trap is given or trap is utilized here with the help of our general distillation assembly a trap is used here to capture or to trap the water or moisture present in the food sample this trap is used and that's why this trap is developed by the two scientists Bid bidwell and sterling and hence the name is given in the honor of their them and it is called as bidwell sterling moisture trap okay so the apparatus used for this i have drawn here okay so this is a simple condenser <coughs> simple condenser is generally used okay so this is a inward this is out, out in, inlet and outlet of this water condenser okay then um, a bidwell sterling trap is attached with the help of this socket okay and this has an outlet or this has an arm side arm we can say side arm and this side arm is then connected to the uh, flask okay and in that flask we can take here solvent plus sample sample means our food sample which have the trapped water or water is present or moisture is present in our sample and that sample is then taken with a solvent okay so such mixture is taken in a uh, this flask okay then this flask is heated with the help of burner or in a by any means this flask is heated okay so obviously the solvent is the air immiscible with the sample and bidwell sterling moisture trap is generally successful or it is giving best results when the solvent is solvent is less dense less denser less denser than water okay so when the solvent is less denser than water automatically it will uh, 
occupy the top layer it will occupy the top layer in the solvent system in the mixture okay and water add as it is having high density it will form a bottom layer okay so this is a uh, system or mixture of solvent and sample is taken in this flask then when we are heating the sample what will happen <coughs> let us set to lean which has a boiling point around 110 degrees celsius around 110 degrees celsius and we have water we have a water which has a boiling point 100 degrees celsius okay so we have a mixture of these two solvents let us say in this flask and we are heating so when we are heating <coughs> first of all at the boiling point of water this is one of the nothing but a distillation technique reflex distillation we are reflexing the mixture okay but a mixture of immiscible two solvents are there okay so at the boiling point of water is less 100 degrees Celsius. so it will boil boil up at the first okay then when it get boils as the temperature difference between water and toluene is very less okay so when water starts boiling the it, it forms vapors okay these vapors will pass through this side arm and it will enter into this as this is a water condenser so these hot vapors when they are coming in contact with the cold surface of this uh, condenser they get start to condense so condense means here water is present in liquid form when we are heating them they are converted to vapor form okay when these vapors are get in contact with this condenser which is a cold surface so temperature is decreases here temperature is decreased okay cold surface so these vapors are again converted to liquid so we can say here drops so water drops start to form here in this region okay when they comes in contact with this vapor comes in contact with this cold surface of condenser water droplets start to form and then these water droplets when it is forming they never enter into this side arm they falls into this trap okay so that's why it is called as trap so they get caught in this trap and these water droplets are entering into this measuring tube so this is these are there are markings for milli, milli, milliliter ml markings are there for this just like our measuring cylinder ml markings are there okay and water droplets are start to collecting in this uh, calibrated uh, side tube okay in this trap okay so <coughs> this is a general experimental procedure but what will happen when this toluene is forming a hazy mixture with this water because it can form emulsion there is no any difference between the boiling points of toluene and water so that they can form a hazy mixture okay so uh, hazy haziness can be seen among this uh, bs trap and this side arm and in this uh, flask and up to this half portion of this water condenser okay so uh, along with this when <coughs> there may be a chance for escaping the water droplets from this water condenser from this area and up, up to from this area as we moving from this to this portion the temperature of that water vapor is going to decrease and that's why they cannot escape beyond this space so that's why they may be present up to this so water droplets may come up to this okay so when vapor comes in contact with up to this point of this condenser the water droplets can condense here and they may uh, get adhered they may get adhered I mean they can stick to the inner side of this condenser so what we should what we are going to do here we are going to use here a burette supported with a brush burette supported with a brush okay and that burette supported with a brush is inserted through this upper uh, side of that con water condenser okay and with the help of this uh, tool we are immersing that uh, water droplets from the inner core of that condenser to this 
up to the to this bottom side of this bidwell sterling trap okay so what will happen no any water molecule will remove or will escape through this water condenser why it is so because we are determining the uh, moisture present in our food sample so if some water droplets may get escape from this water condenser so our analysis may get wrong so that's why to avoid this a brush is taken which is immersed with toluene okay it is rinsed with toluene and this because what we are uh, using toluene here because toluene is a our another immiscible solvent okay so it is get rinsed with toluene and that brush is immersed from the top of this condenser and it is then um, pushes it is then push downward so that they came in contact with this hot vapor okay and they again condense and then they are recollected into this trap okay so why it is so because we are going to detect the moisture or water present in that molecules or in that food sample very clearly or very accurately let us say okay so this is the <coughs> procedure for this bidwell sterling moisture trap okay now uh, for 50 milligram of for 50 milligram of sample for 50 milligram of sample we can measure the volume of water which is collected in this tube okay so 2 into volume of water 2 into volume of water is equal to percent moisture percent of water or percent of moisture percentage of moisture this is the calculation part for this bidwell sterling moisture analysis okay 2 into volume of water that we have collected here into the percent is equal to percentage of moisture okay now the last technique that is known as Carl Fisher technique Carl Fisher technique is one of the very famous technique or method used for the moisture analysis which is used in different fields of uh, food analysis then uh, drug analysis then uh, chemical analysis etc okay so Carl Fisher technique K A R L Carl Fisher technique Carl Fisher technique is the chemical method chemical method for the food analysis Carl Fisher technique is one of the chemical method for food analysis okay so Carl and Fisher are the two scientists who discovered this technique and that's why they this technique is given by the name of them okay so what is there in Carl Fisher technique so Carl Fisher technique is the <coughs> this technique is generally used for the low moisture content low moisture content of the food sample low moisture content if it is present then this technique can be generally used okay and this technique is best on the reduction of iodine reduction of iodine by sulfur dioxide reduction of iodine by SO2 sulfur dioxide this technique is based on the principle of reduction of iodine by SO2 okay then uh, four component system can be used here four component system is generally used okay and these four component systems are these are two i2 and so2 then third one is pyridine and fourth one is methanol i2 sulfur dioxide pyridine and methanol all these are mixed and it is treated with water okay so there are two techniques or two titrations can be done for Carl Fisher technique one is called as volumetric volumetric titration and another is called as colometric titration colometric titration volumetric titration and colometric titration okay so the details that we this is there is no any need to uh, 
discussed all the, uh, these two techniques but what is necessary is the uh, the principle and how that Carl Fisher uh, reagent is used for the uh, analysis of moisture okay so what is the reaction reactions that are occurring between these uh, uh, reagents are pyridine is having formula this is the structure of pyridine okay so this is a six membered nitrogen heterocyclic ring okay <coughs> five carbon one two three four five so it is c5 hydrogen one two three four five and one hydro atom is nitrogen so c5h5n is the molecular formula of pyridine so it is reacts with iodine c5 h5 and dot i2 okay then it combines with c5 h5 n dot so2 okay plus c5 h5 n that is simple pyridine and water okay so iodine and sulfur dioxide are get mixed or they get dissolved in the mixture of two solvents that is pyridine and water so water is already present in our food sample the reaction between them takes place like this okay and the i2 reduction takes place and we are getting here this molecule and this molecule plus this hydrogen okay it is react it is giving two molecules of c5 h5 and dot hi dot hi okay plus c5 h5 n o so3 o sorry c5 h5 n so3 okay so this species is generally formed again this species that is c5 h5 n dot so3 reacts with the remaining component fourth component that is methanol that is cs3 oh and it is forming c5 h5 n h so4 cs3 okay so these are the reactions which are uh, form or which are occurring between this four component system i2 so2 pyridine methanol with water that is moisture present in our sample okay then from this reaction it is clear that three moles of pyridine one two and three three moles of pyridine three moles of pyridine one mole of i2 one mole of i2 one mole of so2 one mole of so2 and one mole of methanol one mole of methanol are required for the uh, reaction of one mole of water so this water water is only one mole so for each mole of water this mole ratio is required for the reaction okay now the next point is Carl Fisher reagent so all these <coughs> mixtures in a proper proportion when it is available in the market okay so in the market all these uh, chemicals they are prepared in proper proportions and a reagent is uh, prepared that reagent is called as Carl Fisher reagent okay so that Carl Fisher reagent is used for the Carl Fisher titration okay and in this titration I2 and SO2 in proper proportion i2 and so2 in proper proportion are added are added into the sample into the sample 
before titration okay so these two chemicals are added before titration into the sample okay then <coughs> moisture from that uh, our food material is get reacts with this i2 okay and it is get reduced by the water present in our sample to hi okay and the excess of iodine excess of iodine that is remain unreacted by that water is then titrated is then titrated is then titrated so this is the principle of carl fischer titration is then titrated the end point of this titration is visible with our naked eyes and the end point is having uh, dark red brown color dark red brown color the end point is visible to our eye or it can be visually determined uh, and it is having dark red brown color okay now the next point is carl fischer reagent equivalence carl fischer reagent equivalence it is called as kfr equi kfr equivalence it is called carl fischer reagent equivalence okay so carl fischer reagent equivalence is represents the equivalent amount of water equivalent amount of water or moisture equivalent amount of water or moisture that reacts with that reacts with 1 ml of kfr 1 ml of kfr so carl fischer reagent is there and <coughs> carl fischer reagent when it reacts 1 ml of that kfr when it reacts with uh, water so what equivalent amount of water is needed to react with that 1 ml kfr that value is nothing but kfr equivalent okay and that's why this kfr equivalent can be used or can be determined by sodium potassium sorry sodium tartarate dihydrate tartarate dihydrate so this primary standard substance is used for the determination of kfr equivalent its molecular formula is na2 c2 h4 o6 dot twice h2o so it is this primary standard substance it is already having two water of hydration molecules okay and the calculation part is like this kfr equivalence is equal to in milligram per water milligram water per ml is equal to as it can test two water molecules so molecular weight of molar mass of one mol uh, water molecule is 18 into 2 36 so 36 gram water per mole of this sodium tartarate dihydrate into s into 1000 divided by 230.08 gram per mole into a so this is the molecular weight of sodium tartarate dihydrate okay and this is the calculate calculation formula now what is this uh, s s is the weight s is the weight of sodium uh, sodium tartarate dihydrate weight of sodium tartarate dihydrate then th 1000 is the number then a a is the uh, ml of kfr reagent ml of kfr reagent okay so by using of this formula kfr equivalent can be determined once this kfr equivalent is determined then per percent moisture or percent water can be calculated by using the formula kfr equivalent kfr equivalent into 
के एस डिवाइड बाय एस इंटू हंड्रेड इंटू हंड्रेड वेर के एस इज द एम एल ऑफ के के एफ आर रिजेंट एम एल ऑफ के एफ आर रिजेंट रिक्वायर्ड फॉर दिस टाइट्रेशन एंड येस इज द वेट ऑफ सैंपल और वेट ऑफ आवर फूड सैंपल इन मिलीग्राम ओके यस इज वेट ऑफ फूड सैंपल इन मिलीग्राम ओके सो दिस इज द फॉर्मुला फॉर कैलकुलेटिंग दिस के एफ आर पर्स एंड मॉइचर यूजिंग कैलपिशर टेक्निक सो दिस इज जनरल डिस्क्रिप्शन और द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ कैलफिशर टेक्निक सो ऑल दी मेथड्स फॉर मॉइचर एनालिसिस एंड टोटल सोलर एनालिसिस आर ओवर ओके वी शाल वी विल एंड अप विद दिस दिस सेकेंड चैप्टर दैट इज मॉइचर एंड टोटल सोलर एनालिसिस ओके so no i think this is third chapter okay so uh, see this video two to three times then and then you can uh, understand all the concepts regarding this uh, moisture and total solid analysis thank you very much have